The map and apply functions return a list of the same length as a vector or list, each element of which is the result of applying a function to the corresponding element. Let's start with an example. Imagine you want to calculate power for a two sample t-test with a mean difference of 0.2 and a standard deviation of 1 for all the sample sizes between 100 and 1000. Now you could run a function power.t.test. You set n equals 100, delta equals 0 0.2, sd equals 1, and the type is a two sample. When you run this, it shows you a summary, but power.t.test actually returns a list. So let's assign that to the variable p100. If we look at p100 here, we can see that it's a list with names and delta, SD, sig level, power, alternative, note, and method that gives you the information about what is this a uh, power calculation for. Now we gave it most of these numbers, the N, the delta, the SD. Um, it defaults to a significance level of 0 0.05 and tells us that the power is 0.29. Um, now when you type P100 into the console or in a code chunk, it gives you a kind of human readable output. But if we pipe that to str, you can see each item in the list, and we can access the individual items we can use this double bracket notation or the dollar sign notation. So imagine now you want to calculate power for this two sample t-test for many many different sample sizes. We could do this repeatedly, just copy and paste here and set this to say 200 and 300 and all the way up to whatever you want. You could run each of these, create a table, and even graph from that table. You can see even with just doing three of these, it's pretty tedious and what if I change my mind? I want to look at more, fewer, change the, the deltas. So what we can do here is use the map or apply functions to run this function on a vector of different ends. First, we need to create a vector of the ends that we want. We can use the sequence function to create a sequence of ends from 100 to 1,000 in steps of 100. Just have a quick look at that to make sure, nope, to 1,000, there we are. Okay, now we're going to use first one of the apply functions. Um, L apply returns a list. The first argument is the vector that we want to iterate over, so n. The second argument is the function that we want to apply. That's power.t.test. We can just put it here as the second argument with no parentheses. If power.t.test needs further arguments, and it does here, we can just add those in. So apply will send each value of n to power.t.test as the first argument, also adding these arguments. We can run that. Now we see we've got 10 separate power analyses. We can save those as an object, so pcalc. We can look in there. Each of these list items is itself a list. So let's use another one of the apply functions to just get the power out of that list and assign that to an object called power. So 
S apply is a way to iterate over a list but returns a simplified version, so a vector instead of returning a list. And what we want here is a vector of just the power. So we're going to take the pcalc list and for each item in that list we want to run a function that returns to us the value of power. Now remember we can get for pcalc1 the value of power with this double bracket notation and you can, if you put the double bracket, the left double brackets inside of back ticks, you can use that as a function inside of apply functions. And the next argument is which item in the list do we want to return? So all this does is take each item in pcalc, extracts, this is called the extraction operator, extracts the named item called power. We run that. Power is now the power for each of these. So this is a nice little function that lets you extract named items from a list. You could also extract, say, the first item from each list. And that would be n. But you can extract them by position or by name. The apply functions are part of base r. We'll also learn the tidy functions that are equivalents, and these are the map functions. They do the exact same thing, so let's run this with map instead of L apply. And the version that returns a vector in map is map underscore and then the data type that you want to return. So you could return character vector, a vector of doubles, um, vector of integers or logical values. There are lots and lots of specialized map functions in the per package in the tidyverse. Um, we'll just be learning about a few of them, but they're worth learning more about. They're very powerful. So power, the data type is a double. So it's a number that has um, decimal places. So we use the map double function to return power. If we just use the map function, that expects you to have a list and then what now you have is a list where each list item is a length one vector of the power number. We'd rather have a vector back that's easier to use so we'll use the map double function. So you can also use the map functions inside of a mutate function. Say to run power.t.test on the value of n from each row of a table. So we can create a tibble where n is the sequence of 100 to 1000 by steps of 100. So this table. Then we can pipe that to a mutate function. Make a column called pcalc and use the map function to map the value of n onto power.t.test. And we can also set the delta to 0.2, sd to 1, and the type to 2 sample. Okay. What we get here is a table where there's a pcalc column and inside of each cell is a full list. We can create another column called power and use the map double function to extract the power from that list. So remember this is our extraction operator and we want to extract the named item power. Okay, now we don't need pcalc anymore for what we're doing so we can just unselect it. And now we can pipe this say to ggplot and plot n versus power.
And now we've got a lovely power curve for the ends 100 through 1000.